Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing well. Today's Friday, followed by Saturday and Sunday. Just so happens. Maybe have a little bit of me time over the weekend. You know, kind of nice. Got some new cans of duster. And it comes with two different straws. Look at this. It's got a shorty. i never seen one of these with a shorty. Hmm, pretty cool. Yeah. So, my last video, I was told by... Uh, corporate that I was doing a little bit too much talking and not enough working. So in this video, it's going to be different. It's going to be a lot more talking and less working. I mean, more working and less talking. So let's get down to it. First off, I'm going to do is take care of these front ends. Yeah, I'm going to do all the work on the fretboard first, then continue with the work on the headstock. Reason why I've got the can of air is to make sure I get no metal shavings on the headstock at all. So when I go to start polishing the headstock, I'm not going to be scratching the hell out of it. And the reason why this towel is here is because I don't want any metal shavings inside of my little neck holder here. So I've got a fret file over here for rounding off the ends of the frets, what I don't need because these are pretty good. But I do need a side file here. The side file is going to basically... Uh, cut these ends a little bit to where they're not so sticky or sharp, whichever you want to call them. So let's get to work. So some of you are probably thinking to yourselves right now, but Eric, I thought you said that it doesn't need a fret leveling job. I'm not going to do a fret leveling job. I'm going to clean the frets and polish them. When I do stuff up for somebody, it's done up right. Ask anybody that I've ever done any work for. I do it up, I do it up right. Covering the headstock. I do not want to get anything on it. So let's get to it. So I hope you guys are enjoying the music I stole. Sorry, CCJ music. Uh, kind of like your stuff too. And uh, give me a little bit of advertisement in one of my videos. So enjoy the music. And I'm going to hit these with the fret erasers. I'm not going to erase the frets, but I'm going to just clean them up a little bit. So here we go. One eighty down. Two more to go. I mean, 180 grit. Four hundred down. One more to go. I mean, four hundred grit. Wait, deja vu. Sounds familiar, don't it? All right. So the one thousand grit is done. Now. I don't know if you kind of noticed this or not, but on my fret erasers, what happened to my light? There you go. On my fret erasers, they're kind of like, you see the lines over here? There's a groove where those lines are. I get both sides of the fret, not just the top. Some people will take the fret eraser like this and just kind of hit the tops with them. Uh, I like to get both sides and including the top. So next, I'm going to blow this off and... Uh, pull out the heavy machinery to give them a really proper polish. All right, so another great piece of music that I stole is by Robert Clark, another great one. So what I'm gonna do here is, well, I'm gonna need to get some more of this stuff. I got my mag and aluminum polish, great stuff to use on frets. And I just wanna smear some of it on there. Not a whole hell of a lot, but enough. A 
like a shiny new quarter. <laughs> oh, hello. Just rearranging things here a little bit. Because now I'm going to start polishing this headstock. So I washed my hands, got rid of any contaminants that might have been on my hands from the chemicals that I was using for the neck, which is the... Stay. Which is the mag and aluminum polish. And I want to make sure that my hands have nothing because I don't want to have any type of... A, um, it wouldn't be a chemical reaction, but contaminated hands can contaminate the rag different chemicals mixing with other chemicals you don't know what it's going to do when you're polishing something out so don't do it wash your hands so i'm still playing with uh robert clark's music and uh yeah so i hope you guys enjoy oh sorry less talking more working right so here we go Alright, so that is just with the number one rubbing compound. Looks pretty good. Not too bad at all. Came out really nice. So I'm going to hit it with the number two rubbing compound now. So that is the number two rubbing compound. And I'm gonna hit it with the Scratch Doctor next, which the Scratch Doctor is gonna remove any scratches from buffing this. Voila. Can you count the little dots on the fluorescent light? If not, then I gotta do it over again. All right, so I've been doing this for a very long time now. I mean, even before I even got into the guitar work, I was working with different types of finishes, uh, mostly for auto body and if you want a glass like finish regardless if you're using a electric buffer mechanical or if you're doing it by hand the prep work beforehand is very important in order to have a glass like finish you want to have that glass like finish take your time this thing here is no different in fact it's pretty much you know basically like stock now besides the little inserts i had to put on the other side but some people will sit there and say that microfiber cloths are uh, not a good idea to use for polishing or washing your car or this, that, or the other. Well, I got to tell you, uh, it's better than paper towel, number one. Paper towel does scratch, will scratch, and will continue to scratch if you use it. True microfiber cloths, the real deal, not the fake cheap ones, uh, will not scratch unless you drop them on the ground, throw them on a dirty countertop, or if there's some type of particles inside of it that uh, it just happened to catch, you know, just laying it out someplace. You can wash them, which I recommend it. I reuse mine all the time and still get glass-like results on the finishes that I polish them with. Now, this thing here is not done by any means. I have to drill out all the holes for the truss rod cover. I have to remove all of the extra rubbing compound that's inside the holes for the tuners, which the factory doesn't do. And then I need to reopen up the holes for the tuners because there's a buildup of 
black flat black paint and clear coat inside of them uh, then I'm going to seal those holes with a rub on poly uh, reason why well that's just a little bit more as far as uh, you know moisture is not going to get in there uh, plus it'll make it look like a nice finish on the inside and done right you know so I'm hoping once all the work is done on this thing, this thing doesn't fall apart on Weedy when he gets it and starts putting string tension on it. But for right now, uh, I'm done. Um, but the guitar neck is not. So I still have to do a little bit more work to it. That's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, this thing came along really nicely. Uh, I have to thank everybody out there. Thanks Zip for uh, pointing me in the right direction as far as getting the repair done. Everybody else who put their two cents in it, I appreciate it. Uh, Got to thank Jeff over at uh, Diamond Cut Graphics for the graphic that uh, is on here right now. And uh, yeah, this worked out a hell of a lot better than the first two that I tried to apply. So you guys take care, have a great weekend, and I'll catch up with you later.